Okay, we're going live now onto the Observer. All right, so I call it the Observer tool. And, um, okay, so it's, or another way, Romana's way of calling it self-inquiry, inquiring into the nature of myself. Um, and uh, how am I experiencing myself? So the first thing to realize is when you're doing self inquiry is recognize how do I experience myself? And however you experience yourself, that's the first thing is to get a reading of what am I right now? So I'll give, uh, now for each individual will be different. Some people may experience themselves as feelings in the body. Some people may experience their body some people may experience the self as their thinking. So, as you take a reading of yourself, then you ask, uh, the next question is, well, let's, I'll, I'll try and do, pretend, to, pretend to do it on myself as if I was a real guinea pig subject. So if I was identified with my body and I had some feelings in the body, and I was uh, identified with my thinking, and oh, I experienced myself then the, what am I? Oh, I experienced myself as feeling my body and my thoughts. Okay, then the next thing would be then, if I'm aware of my body and my thoughts, then is there, then what is here that is observing or witnessing that? What's observing or witnessing that? And become aware of being the witnesser or the observer of the body and the thoughts. Because realize whenever anything is recognized or experienced as self, which is, in, which is experienced as a limited self or a contracted self <coughs> or a separated sense of self, then there has to be that which is witnessing or observing that. Okay? So, <coughs> for, example, so for example, if I, was, if I was experiencing myself as this mug, and I think, oh, I experience myself as being limited or contracted into the shape of this mug or my body, for example. Oh, I believe I'm the mug. But then to be, to be aware that I'm the mug, there has to be the observer of the mug, which is not the mug. There has to be the witnesser of the mug, which is not the mug. So then detach from the witnessing of the mug and becoming the witnesser or the observer of the body or becoming the witnesser or the observer of the thoughts. Another way of saying this is if there's any experience of identified separation, what do I mean by that? If there's any experience of, of self being my thoughts or my body or feelings within the body or pictures or images, then if that experience of the self is those things, those limited things which are here or passing or changing, then what is here that is witnessing the change? What is here which is observing the sense of limitation? As one experiences that which is observing or witnessing the sense of limitation, if one is in that position, is one experiencing oneself as the limited? And if one is experiencing oneself as limited or identified with that which is passing, i.e. thoughts, bodies, feelings, images, then that observer or that witnesser has some kind of investment or interest or attachment to that which is passing. So what then is observing or witnessing without attachment or without investment or interest in that uh, what is observing that observer? So if you become the observer, it's a very good thing if you fall asleep because it means then your ego doesn't want to hear what's being said because it's a threat. It's a threat to the. It's a threat to the ego. So it often likes to to go to sleep to not to not be immersed in the information being given, which is actually quite a normal thing. So being the witnesser being the witnesser of thoughts, or the detached witnesser of thoughts. So as you become, if I experience, so here's an example, if, if I was experiencing myself as this mug or this body, and I become the witnesser of the body, then the witnesser cannot be the mug. 
So one releases that sense of contraction or that sense of being identified with something that's limited. And if that which is witnessing has some relationship with it, i.e. some interest or investment, then what's witnessing that? And is the witnesser of that, does, is that witnesser having any sense of contraction or separation or limitation? Is there any tiredness or is there any constriction? Is there any fear? Is the witnesser a thought? Is the witnesser the body? Is the witnesser a feeling? Is the witnesser an image? Or is the witnesser of all these things free of all of that, and not subject to that which can come and go? Okay, so we're on camera. I just wanted to ask if there was a volunteer that wanted to be, have their voice on camera to see if I can, um, if I am able to help them in some way to experience that. Yeah, okay. So what do you, how do you experience yourself in this moment, this precise moment, what do you experience yourself as? I'm, I'm aware of my body. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I experience myself as, as my body, some parts of my body more, more, no more in the foreground than yes. others. And uh, I'm aware of seeing parts of my body with my eyes and knowing parts of my body are there with, with other senses. That's great. That's a great answer. That's, that's what I'm looking for. So what are you experiencing right now as self? That's great. So, um, okay, so let's stop, stop, stop there for a second. Okay, so let's go into the inquiry bit. So you're experiencing the body and some parts more than others, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. When, when something is experienced, there is that which observes the experience which is not that which is being experienced. Okay, so l I'll just do this as an example. You're observing this mug, is that correct? Yes. There, so there's an observation of phenomena, yes? But there's, are you the mug? No. no. Okay, good. But you're aware, so that which is witnessing this is, has a, is, able to, is able to experience the dimensions of this, but it's far beyond that, yes? Is that right? Yes. Okay, good. So the witnesser of the mug is not limited to the mug because it can experience the limits of the mug. Okay? Yeah. So, and the pure witnesser has got no confusion that it is the mug. Okay? Right. <clears throat> so there's experiencing of the body. The body has, is limited. There's an awareness of the limits of the body. Yes? Yes, yes. So there is something here which is witnessing the body, which is not the body. Are you, are, you, are you aware of that which is witnessing the body, which is not the body, confined to the limits? Yes. Okay. Is, in, the, in the witnessing of the body, is the witnesser limited or contracted in any way? No, well, it's, it's boundless. Good. So remain in this, remain there in the boundless space. Don't pick up the identification, the limits of the body. Stay in that boundless place for a while, and I'll come back to you in a moment. Is there, is there anyone else who wants to volunteer on camera? Or do we put the camera off? You okay to speak on camera? Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you experience, how are you experiencing self in this very moment? Um, from the body or the mind? No, well, what are, what are you experiencing as yourself? right now? Um, the breath, the thoughts, okay. the physical okay. sensations. So, so there's, okay, breaths, thoughts, physical sensations. Are these, are the, I mean, you know, like, like if you open your eyes, I'm witnessing this mug. Mm -hmm. What, there's clarity that the mug is not me. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you aware of what I've said? Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're aware of thoughts and mugs, but are any of these things you? I'm witnessing it. It's me, but it's not oh, physically. Oh, are, are you are you this mug? Not physically. Okay, so there's clarity. I have clarity when I'm when there's witnessing of this mug. This mug has got nothing to do with my infinite self. I have no attachment to this being me. So I experience unlimited presence. Okay, because I have, I'm not attached, or I don't have any hooks or identification with that. 
So that's, that's a clear spiritual experience. Okay. So you're also quite clear this is not you. It's not me physically, no. But it's in my mind. So there's parts of me that believes that the, the well, uh, well, body is part of me. And I'm well, uh, uh, to it. Okay, a, a belief is a thought. Yeah. Are you, okay, so the thoughts that come and go. They do come and go, yeah. Yes, they, they come and go. So something is witnessing them come and go which is not the thoughts. Because mm -hmm. the witnesser of a thought is not a thought, is that clear? Or is that unclear? Or do you think there's a thought witnessing a thought? That would be a thought as well. I'm confused. Yeah, okay. well confusion is thinking. And that which witnesses confusion, because confusion wasn't here and now it's here. Mm -hmm. And something witnesses the coming and going of confusion which is not confused. Right, okay, so it's brought to the moon. But we're talking about experiencing it rather than understanding or thinking about it. So are you aware of something that is witnessing thoughts and confusion, which is not the confusion? Mm. Okay. In, this, in the witnesser, is the witnesser limited or contracted? It's, lim it's limitless. Good. Yeah. Good. So if you don't pick up, identify or attach, mm. then that is unlimited. If you attach to something or bind yourself to something, you experience contraction. I'll, I'll leave it there for a moment with you. Is there another volunteer on camera? Or we can put the camera off for... Um, that will do. Okay, we switch this off.